We've prognosticated, speculated, and hypothesized enough. Now it's a reality. In just days, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X will launch and thus usher in the next console generation. Now that we know all that there is to know, let's take a peek under the hood of these respective consoles and see what we've got. And also find out just how wrong, or right, we were in our guesses from earlier this year. All this, next, on Downloadable Content. Welcome to Downloadable Content. I'm Brian, and with me we have Ron. Hello, everyone. And it's Ron Alone Day. Just the two of us. Just the two of us. It's... I believe there's a song about that. Uh, several, very likely. Just the two of us. Just will be a nice, 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 cozy, intimate episode. Just two schlubs talking, uh, talking video games at you for the next little bit. So, mm-hmm. mm, and we've got, we've got some stuff to talk about. We've got some new consoles to talk about, and it's no longer prognostication. They're a reality now. They exist. So before we dive into all of that, just want to remind everyone that every single episode of downloadable content can be found on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and Spotify, as well as our webcast, dlcpodcast.com. It's all there. Click on the feedback button. Let us know what uh, what you like, what you think. Um, I would say give us suggestions for future episodes, but uh, we are coming down to the wire here. Just four episodes left uh, before my tenure of downloadable content comes to an end. Whether it lives on beyond this year, who knows? Or if it or if it goes gracefully into that good night, that's fine too. But we're down to the final four for me. So. Yeah, getting near the end there. Getting near, getting near the end here. It's been a nice ten year run, but we'll we'll save the goodbyes and farewells for when we get there. We still have episodes to do. We're talking PS Five and Xbox Series X. That's a mouthful. I just I keep wanting to just call it sex just, box. I was gonna say just call it sex box, like everyone did the moment that the title was originally announced for the damn thing. Funny story. Fun. <laughs> Funny story. Uh, I the last time I saw my in laws, uh, we were t- I was talking with my brother in law about the upcoming consoles and the new information that had come out about them, and I had I, I had called it the sex box, and my mother in law did a double take. <laughs> <laughs> my mother, what? Like, no, no, no. This is not some sort of like kinky device or anything like that. It's it's the Xbox Series X, but that's too much of a mouthful. And so it's been the internet has coined it sex box. And you uh-huh. know, she she felt she felt reassured after that. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was just funny. What? Like, no, no, no. Microsoft is not putting out, you know, Halo. Porn, porn, ap- porn applications or porn, porn equipment. Yeah, Microsoft is not putting out Halo the dildo. It's you know the Master Chief vibe. Yeah, the, yeah, the, yeah, the Master Chief dong. <laughs> so no, no, no. All right, all right. So um, when we prognosticated earlier this year, we had a whole bunch of guesses, thoughts, dreams, hopes on what we were hoping for PS5 and and the sex box to be. Now they're out. So which one do you want to start with first? I feel like the Xbox would probably be the shorter of the two. And I feel like if to make it easier, um, part one would be Xbox Series X and S, and then part two would just be the PS5, because quite frankly, it's another repeat of like it was last year consoles. Like Xbox might be a technically stronger console in terms of hardware 
but the game lineup does not excite me in the least. We'll start with Microsoft then. So now Microsoft was, I think, the first to actually just come out of the gate with all of the things, with its, all of its specs and all the things that it can and can't do. Um, and the talk of backwards compatibility, what's it capable of, et cetera, et cetera. Like, yeah. Like they were very sort of forthright and very forward with what this was, whereas Sony played their hand very close to the chest for a while. Yeah. Like I, I, if memory serves, the PS5 reveal was like both revealing some of the games that were coming out for it, along with what the console looked like in its price. Whereas the Xbox, um, they showed off all the games first and then didn't really reveal the hardware stuff until around the same time they someone did for their stuff. Like they revealed what the system looked like, Sony. Back, yeah, back in June, and, and yeah, and, they didn't. They, they, they didn't show us the price until mid September. They did, yeah, to, to, uh, later on. Um, they did their full reveal presentation in June, but then more information came out um, as we got into fall, and so. But Microsoft had already basically just laid it out right there, most of it, most of it on the line for you, and. You know, just looking at at the base specs now that now that they are going to put out two flavors of this console, the Series X and the Series S, and I feel bad for every single retail associate that is oh going to have God. to deal with confused parents. Like these companies never think of the parents. Yeah, I mean, okay. To be fair, Sony Sony has been very simple. Yeah, it's like. Like Sony, so, like it's boring, but it's effective. But it, yeah, give me, but the, give me the latest, give me the latest Sony console. Okay, yeah. that's a PS5. All right, well, give me the latest Xbox console. Well, which one do you want? Well, uh, what do you mean? There's two versions. He's like, well, there's, there's this version, which is a small white box, and there's this, this other version, which is a taller black box. All right, well, what's the cost on them? Three hundred dollars or five hundred dollars? All right, give me the cheaper one because it's, it's cheaper. It means I can get games for the kid too. So. With the announcement of the X and the S, I think Microsoft actually did a really smart thing here. And they have basically, an, with these two separate flavors of console, they have basically acknowledged that physical media is on the way out and digital is has taken over. Yeah. Which, if which, is that also, which is the thing that also Sony has kind of acknowledged too. Yep, but if you are a gamer of a certain age, you're probably a bit sad by this. I know that for for a lot of us in our 30s and, and older, the growing up on physical media and still basically, you know, still having the desire to own your discs or your cartridges, this move to pure digital, you know, it, it, there's, there's a little bit of a, of a sadness there and maybe a little bit of an ambivalence, but... With, with two different flavors and one definitely one two two hundred dollars less than the other, I think Microsoft made a smart business decision. Mm-hmm. Because- no, 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 definitely. I definitely. I think it's a a reasonable thing to think that with the prevalence of bandwidth, broad speed broadband internet, basically throughout. I don't want to say the entire U.S., but to most of the core audience of the U.S., for the people that do buy the consoles, that shifting over to a uh, that's the terabyte hard drive for the Xbox Series X, and then 512 gigabytes for the Series S. I feel like those are reasonable. Oh yeah. Like, granted games out right now that really don't take some a lot of games don't take up a ton of hard drive space unless you're called duty with high res texture packs in which case you usually need to take out a loan for some of the storage on some of these things but they will fit on the storage capabilities of the series s and the series x 
even for Call of Duty high risk texture packs because for some reason people want to play Call of Duty zombies with really graphic depictions of the textures on the zombies when they shoot their heads off. Yeah, I yeah, I mean I I, I don't get it. I, I still don't get our obsession with shiny, but that's a whole another rant and I'm mm-hmm. not going to repeat myself. Um also the digi- the the series X means it's at the same price point as the Switch. Yeah, for a Series S, yes, exactly. The difference is obviously being that the Series S isn't a portable device. It is a dedicated console, uh, but it is meant to be more of a streaming thing where it is meant to be like a media center that can also do gaming compared to the Series X, which is meant to be a game device that can also do some media stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely pick your poison there. And with obviously you have, I mean, obviously it's not going to be portable, but again, with digital distribution and with video games becoming a subscription service, like Xbox Game Pass, for example. Um, I mean, I personally don't like that direction, but a lot of the younger generation who are who are used to and they grew up on digital downloads and and subscription services for video games this is going to be right up their alley yeah and i i get part i get part of the reason why too is keep like keep in mind too the game pass also ties into pc too so like yep. anything that's on the game pass is also going to be playable on the pc yep um and i believe for the vast majority i think they announced that this game pass was going to be 10 bucks for the series for the like the next gen I'll games, look, I think. I'll look that up. I know that the the PC uh, Xbox Game Pass is is ten bucks a month. Uh, right now, they're doing a pro. At the time of this recording, they're doing a promo where it's a dollar for the first month. Yeah, um, I know there used to be one where it was a dollar for the first month, and then if you had, I I, I know currently I'm only paying like five thirty after taxes for the Game Pass on the PC. Because I locked in that rate when they first demo when they first released it, I think it's, and I think it's one of those things where it's like as long as you're paying that, I think it's one of those things where it's like you kind of grandfathered into that price as long as you're paying it. But once you drop the subscription even for like a month or something, you're gonna have to pay the the ten dollar price. Okay, so you have three flavors of the Xbox Game Pass. You have console at ten bucks a month. Uh, PC is ten bucks a month, but right now they're doing the promo where uh, the first month is a dollar. And, yeah, then, about it. and then you have the ultimate, which is both for fifteen dollars a month, and also includes Xbox Live Gold. Yeah. And I look at this, and I just think of the dearly departed Sega channel going, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but twenty-five years too early there, Sega. Twenty-five years too they early. They were so ahead of their time. Oh. oh. Yeah. I mean, and like, and like to be fair, it's actually not a bad value. Like, like a lot of the games that are on the Game Pass, like it, it rotates out games, but like as like those games are still playable as long as they're installed on your account or on your console or, or PC. So like you can still play them even after they rotate out of the store. But once you install them, they're they're it's bye bye. Yeah, but like it's it's a uh, there's a list of games here. Let me see if I can find. Uh, Dead by Daylight, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Gears Tactics, Grounded, Ori and Will of the Wisps, Sea of Thieves, Tetris Effect Connected, and The Taurus are all on Game Pass. Which, you know, at 10 bucks a month, if you're going to do a subscription service, uh, you know, as opposed to buying the individual games, um, I mean, there's an obvious cost savings here. I get that. Where, where the concern comes in for me as, you know, old man gamer here, uh, is if you have the game downloaded to your PC or your, your, your Series S or X, if that game gets removed from that library, you can't play it anymore unless you actually buy the game outright. Yeah. That, that is my only major, you know, sort of glaring concern is that 
you're getting this great deal. 10 bucks a month. You, you can download all these games right to your device and, you know, play them. But due to the nature of it being the internet, the games could disappear off the off the Game Pass. Yeah, and I know. I do know that, like for the PC Game Pass, some of the games do rotate out. But usually they're on the usually they're on the Game Pass for at least six months. I want to say, like on average, at least six months. So, like, in the vast, in the vast majority of those games, they're not a are usually a play until you beat it sort of thing. And then it's like you're kind of done with it. Like the only ones that really aren't are Sea of Thieves and I guess Forza Horizon 4 and maybe Gears 5. Because those are usually have like an online multiplayer component with them. Yeah, th there's that. So, I mean, I can definitely see where some money might be made. Where you have this service and you play a game and you might decide... Oh crap! I I really really love this game. I I'll go and buy it outright, you know, just in case it disappears from the library. Mm hmm. So I can I can certainly see that, but but on the whole, I th I think with Microsoft doing these these two flavors of console, I think that was a very very smart business decision because, I mean. I don't, I don't know about you personally, but I know mo more and more of my video games, even though I love physical media, are digital download now. Oh, yeah. I've been, like, I've been digital downloading almost all my games now since 2015, 2016, probably. Just, just, it's just more, part of it's just due to the convenience, also part of it's just due to the, 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 the gaming industry as a whole kind of moving away from physical media. And not to mention that now a lot of of even physical discs still force you to download. Yeah, they do. So it's like, okay, what what I mean, sure, I have this disc, but you're still for you still giving me a download code. You say, I still have to go download it. So it's like all right. or day or day one patch of some kind or something like that. Yeah. Well, because, you know, we believe in, in releasing unfinished games to please shareholders. But that's another rant altogether. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and you again, with you know, the Xbox, the, the, the Series X is for your more hardcore. If you want to drop the 500 bucks mm -hmm. um, and, and do the physical thing, that you there's still a place for that. Mm-hmm. And yep. looking at the specs, I'm looking at it and I'm going... Oh, I've built that PC. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, the, 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 this generation is definitely the, the generation where you can look at it and go like, okay, I can I can easily, very easily and succinctly compare and contrast components versus PC parts because some of these things are literally PC parts. Like, uh, uh, just reading off the specs here, Xbox Series S, 8-core AMD Zen 2 CPU at 3.6 gigahertz. All right. GPU of our of AMD's RDNA two GPU, which is the quote unquote big navi. Yep. Um, four teraflops of GPU processing power. Uh, SOC, which I think is the uh, what's SOC? Socket. System I'll, I'll of get computing. Back to you on that. <laughs> System of computing, I think. Um. But 10 gigs of um, G graphical DDR6. Eight of it is for gaming, and two of it is for a running system. In the background stuff, like the the Xbox operating system, um, it, its targeting performance is 1440 at 60 frames. Uh, storage is 512 gigabytes of PCIe Gen 4, um, and the expandable storage, basically a memory card slot, uh, is one terabyte expansion card slot with a single display output of HDMI 2.1. And again, like, I, I look at all that and I just go, okay, the GPU, all right, I have a, I have a six core, you know, Ryzen. Okay, that's fine. Uh, the GPU, fine. Yeah. Ram, RAM, I've got 32 gig, fine. <laughs> yeah. Like, for, 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 for reference, this is, this, this, the Series S is priced at $300. If you try to build a comparables PC 
w like with hitting those similar numbers, I believe it's about seven hundred dollars to build a comparable PC. Oh yeah, and and you know this is where we get into the discussion of console makers taking a loss on their hardware and then they make it up in game sales. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then looking at the Series X, um, it's a eight core CPU at three point eight gigahertz. Uh, with 12 teraflops for the GPU processing power, uh, 16 gigs of that GDDR6 memory, um, one terabyte of the storage, and then uh, and, and it has an optical drive for the Blu-ray, 4K Blu-ray. Like I could see somebody plunking down 500 bucks to buy a Series X, disassembling it completely. And just like wiping, like like the OS off of it, and just putting. Yes, yeah, I think Eric could do that definitely. And like there ha there are just assembly videos up uh, for both the Xbox Series X and the PS5. And already, yeah. Right. Um, the I believe I believe for the Xbox Series X, it's a disassembly by one of the like actual like engineers of the thing, and being like, okay, here's the part we chose, and here's why we chose this, and how it's constructed, and things like that. Um, memory storage, the cooling on this thing is actually not that bad. It's actually like a 120 or 140 millimeter fan. And it's located at the top of the system, so it's just like constantly blowing heat out the top. Yep, that's what I got in my PC, so. Yeah. Um, and there's also a teardown of the PS5, which we'll talk about in the PS5 section. So, you know, obviously, you know, what... what I'm not. I, I'm not about to get into you know PC master race bullshit, but it's like yeah, we're 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 looking at these consoles now, and it's just like when we say that the only difference between a console and a and a dedicated PC is the operating system, that's yeah. really it. Like yeah, I'm looking at the, I'm looking. You, 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 I mean, Ron and I are looking at a, a side by side graphic of the specs of both PS5 and the Xbox Series X. And I'm just looking at this, I'm like, yeah, this, these... Okay, the... We, uh, yeah, why they're, are we they're, they're PCs. These... They're, we're looking at PC specs, basically, folks. Why are we calling consoles? Yeah, it's something like the cell processor with 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 500 gigahertz of, uh, of, of, of CUDA cores or, or, or shit like that. It, it's literally just like... Like the Xbox Series X is approximately a thousand dollars worth of PC parts, and the PS5 is about nine hundred dollars worth. Yeah. So, you know, but, so, but so like, obviously, yeah. From from a, from a pure PC perspective, like these things are worth their weight. They they are they are definitely like a, you're you are paying you're getting you are you are getting a deal on these PC parts as a whole. The only difference being that the PC you can do more than just gaming on you can use it for photoshop or oh, yeah. premiere pro versus the xbox which is going to be for literally or for the for the consoles which is going to be for gaming and like a media center for like watching movies or like netflix or what have you mm -hmm. or or your streaming services of choice so yeah. you know so you know we we can banter about the the specifications all day long. The fact that it's it's still a, a pretty good deal, especially if you are, uh, you know, mind enough to just disassemble one and and you know. yeah you're you, yeah you don't mind you don't mind spending even even if you mess up on the first one, you buy another Series S and probably still be break even on on the on the, <laughs> you could. the cost of it. You absolutely could. So um, yeah. So there's that. All right. Um, moving on to something that I was particularly interested in just to see where both of them stood. Backwards compatibility, which has, has been a thing ever since the days of, you know, PS2, where, you know, it was like, oh, I can play my entire library on this thing now. And so what do we got for Microsoft? What was their stance on backwards compatibility uh, heading I be in. I believe as far as I'm aware every single Xbox One X game is compatible backwards compatible with the Series X and the Series S um 
to my knowledge, I believe they have also gone on record saying that 360 and original Xbox games will be backwards compatible as well, though some of them may be have to require additional tinkering and additional support before they are playable. And to my knowledge, the Kinect games are probably not going to be compatible. But who the hell owned the Kinect anyway? So... Yeah, it's like, what? what, what is that? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, quoting IGN here, uh, quote, in addition to the above launch titles, it is confirmed that both the Series X and Series S will play support all playable games on the Xbox One, which include currently supported Xbox 360 and original Xbox games. However, those that require a Kinect sensor may not be compatible. Uh, it goes on to say that, note, uh, this quote, note that the Series X will not support Xbox One X enhancements that are given to many 360 and original Xbox games. Instead, the Series S will run backwards compatibility features as the Xbox One S, which is applying uh, improved texture filtering, better frame rates, and faster load times with HDR. Which basically just means it's basically making sure that um, if the games... It, it, may, it may run the games at 60 FPS with, uh, with faster load times and running it on that, on that, on that generation's hardware. So... It's like it, they're they're going pretty much full backwards compatibility, like even as far back as the original Xbox One, or the original Xbox games. Which is which is very interesting to see. I mean, like it sort of reminds me of the PlayStation Store, where you know, I mean, I have on my PS3, I can buy PS2 and PS1 games. So going back several generations, um, you know, is pretty good. It looks, I mean. You know, we say 568 games from the Xbox 360 and, like, maybe, I think, what was close to 40 from the original Xbox library are currently backwards compatible with this thing. I'm hoping that number goes up because, you know, not everyone who owned the older consoles played just the the heavy hitters, the the top sellers. Correct. Um, It's also a thing, too, that some of the games that were on the original Xbox... Um, were not necessarily the best optimized, so they would sometimes only run at 30. So some of them running at 60 might be a little wonky because Possibly. they were designed around 30. Yeah, <laughs> that could be that could make for some interesting upscaling. Yep, um, it's also thing too where there is apparently rumors about certain PS4 titles that might be running better on the PS5. So we'll see when we get to the PS5 section. Yep. So. I mean, ultimately, it just looking at the backwards compatibility for the for the new sex box, it, it it looks like right now you might want you might not want to chuck your your Xbox One just yet. Yeah. I mean, it, it's probably not a bad idea to hold on to it at least initially. Um, but it's also a thing too where a lot of the games are supposed to be coming out for the Series X or for the sex boxes are. Um, also, games you can probably be playing on the original One X right now. Yeah, um, a lot of the games that are being that have been announced are cross generation games. Yep. So, still, the fact that that Microsoft is making overtures to four generations of its console—that's something. That's something pretty positive to see. Um, Knowing especially Sony's prior history with including backwards compatibility. Sony is waffling you know, back and forth on it too, where it's like, oh yes, we're going to offer it on for the PS2, and yes, we're going to offer it for the PS3, and then we're going to take it away for the PS3, and then we're going to only offer PS3 backwards compatibility for PS4, and then the online Sony store for playing PS2 and PS1 games, we have to rebuy and just... Yep. wonkiness involved with them. So, you know, we have that to look forward to. All right, so, um, pressing on now, of course, we've we've talked about the specs, we've talked about, you know, backwards compatibility, and, you know, now, now the most important part, what about the games? And, like, that's, again, part of the issue with the Xbox, and in my opinion, has always been the issue with the Xbox, is... That outside of the, the the Halo title and Gears, I nothing excites me. Or it's also on PC, or it's a cross, or it's a multi-platform game. Um, 
So there was a Halo game coming out for the Xbox Series X eventually. Uh, I believe there's a Gears of War 5 will be playable on Xbox Series X and S. I believe it's one of those free... I, I believe... Double checking here. Um, it is. It, if you own on the One X, you can get a free Series X upgrade to it. So it's not going to cost you a dime to play Gears 5 on a Series X. Um, but like other games here, I, I, I really am not seeing like any... So, so, so here's day one release titles for the Xbox series. The, 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 the Xboxes. For lack of a better term. Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Battletoads, Devil May Cry 5, Special Edition, Dirt 5, Enlisted, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Gears Tactics, Man NFL 21, Man Eater, Manifold Garden, NBA 2K21, Observer System Redux, Oregon the Blind Forest, Planet Coaster Console Edition, Sea of Thieves, Tell Me Why, Watch Dogs Legion, Yakuza Like a Dragon, uh, and that's it. And then three days later, you have Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War also releasing. And like that's that, those, those, those are like day one slash week one release titles. Mm. Oh, there's more coming at 11 here, here as well on 17th. So like, it's got some games. They're not bad, but I think every single one I list is also releasing on the prior generation of consoles. Or it has already been released on PC, as you've mentioned. Yeah. Yep. So, you know, not really a whole lot of, of new, like, right out of, like, world release, uh, never been seen before. Yeah. And like some of the games that like are coming out like after like 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 uh like Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, then you have Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, like those are gonna be on both PS five and Series X's, but those are games that were also that are also supposed to be playable on PS fours and one and Xbox Ones. Like So it's like I like what like the, the, I guess the benefit between the two is that the PS5 and the Series X versions will be 60 FPS, I guess. It may be better upscaling on the textures. Like the the of that list, the the one I could potentially see making a very strong start right out of the gate because it is it is a brand new game. I could see Assassin's Creed Valhalla being yeah. being like the really strong starter. Yeah, I mean, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then a couple of days later with. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. I think those are like the two like standout titles. Uh, but then again, I mean, for me personally, I'm going, so you're releasing, you're opening a brand new console with the 22nd Assassin's Creed game. Yeah, and the like 35th Call of Duty game. Like, you're not starting like with your... So it's like, so you, you have a bunch of titles in your launch lineup that are sequels. Mm-hmm. And I know, you know... I, and, it's, and, and they're third-party sequels, too. Yeah. Like, uh, Xbox game here. Here are the games that I'm going I'm to list off the games here that are stated as, as being under Xbox Game Studios, which means they are at least second-party at worst. Battletoads, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Gears Tactics, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Sea of Thieves, and Tell Me Why. Like, those are all Xbox Game Studios games, and every single one of them, to my knowledge, are currently playable on a PC or an Xbox One, N one X. Yeah. I will say, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, though, great game. Yeah, great, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not knocking, I'm not <laughs> knocking the games that are on, on the list, because I, I, some of them are frankly amazing, like like Ori, but like you don't have a launch AAA title from like a, a prior developer. I mean, hell, I think part of the reason why Xbox or Microsoft bought out Bethesda is so they can get the Bethesda games and have them be console exclusives to the Xbox. Oh, absolutely, that's right. I 
because you know COVID has basically time has no meaning yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's currently in March. It's currently in March two hundred and seventy-five. Yeah, it's like uh, what? Oh, right, right. It, I completely forgot the news that Microsoft bought Bethesda. So you know, we're, yeah. we're going to see Clippy in the next Sky in the next Elder Scrolls game. Yeah, uh, well, yeah, like, <laughs> like it, it, it's no joke that like. The, the, the buying out of Bethesda was both surprising and at the same time a good business decision. Especially considering the fact that Bethesda's kind of been shooting themselves in the foot constantly and maybe Microsoft would be like, let's not shoot ourselves in the foot this time, shall we? And like actually like have our games actually be good for a change? Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's also a thing too that they can be like, oh look, Here's 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 all its roll six and here's uh Star Star Force or your sci fi game and here's and here's Fallout five and they're all Xbox exclusive and PC because we gotta we got push Windows Ten sales somehow. Well yes. Like yeah. um Oh yeah, Cyberpunk twenty seven seven comes out on my birthday. So it's uh <laughs> and <laughs> That 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 could be interesting, but I mean, taking a look at, at some of the other games, like I know, um, is it a PS5 exclusive? The the Horizon uh, Zero Dawn yes. sequel. Okay, yeah. so we'll get to, so we'll get there. Okay. Um, yeah, and and, 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 like, and like again, like but that's part of the reason why we're talking about the Xbox stuff first is because um, there's I feel like there's just more to talk about with the PS5. Yeah. So. Uh, I mean, you sure you don't want to? You're not excited for a Tetris effect? I okay. <laughs> I, I I will say this. I have. I believe I've gone on this podcast before saying that I, without playing a second of Tetris Effect, I can say it is a very important game. But I, it's important because of the VR aspect of it, not because of the Tetris uh, you, would you aspect. Like to go, would you like to go on the meditative guided journey that is Tetris Effect? <laughs> I I I I. I, I I am going to I, I I saw the trailer for it. like I, I'm pretty sure I've been on this podcast before and being like go watch the trailer for Tetris Effect and you cannot tell me that this thing is probably going to be a like druggy induced psycho psychotropic episode. Well, you know, so we'll see. Maybe you know, maybe when maybe the, if you buy it for for Xbox Series, then you could just you know be blissfully zonked out yeah and, I, and that, I, maybe that's the thing worth mentioning too is I don't know if we know how the VR stuff's going to work with these new consoles I believe Sony's going to record some of their stuff but I don't know what the Microsoft has said about VR that's that's what a really it? good point I have not seen a whole lot about it I, I last I heard they said that some of the Sony's VR stuff will work for the PS5, but that's one of those like at a later day sort of things. But you know, by the time this this podcast releases and all of you are listening to it, will be about two weeks away from from release. So, you know, maybe we'll get more information between now and then. But like, I know Sony has been really trying to push its VR. Like, they're, yeah, they are trying so hard to make fetch happen, and. I mean, I I per I can't deal with VR. You know, you put a VR headset on me, I will puke within five minutes. <laughs> like, I cannot yeah. play a VR game without incredibly large quantities of Dramamine. So, mm -hmm. I, I've and I've not worn a VR headset long enough to figure out if I do get motion sickness from it. So, I don't know how to reply to that. So, but let's do a quick lookup. Uh, Xbox Series X VR. So, right now, um, it's the idea of having VR on the Xbox Series X and S right now is just a thought. It's the reason why they've been so quiet about it is because it's, they're not going to have it, at least right out of the gate. Okay. Like, in, in theory, these consoles are strong enough to run VR. I mean, like, hell. PS4 can run, PS4 Pros can run VR. Yes. But with like Sony's proprietary the, stuff. The specs can, the specs for the, for the Xbox can obviously support VR, but 
you know, I have said before that I have always felt that VR is a gimmick, but that is my own my own opinion. And the fact that it is not even included, like there, like Microsoft isn't even acknowledging it, and just by they're, like they're talking about it, so it's not going to be included with the console, uh, at least at the start. It might be a thing that would. It, it, I can foresee. I'm just going to sh- throw this idea out there. I don't think Sony. Uh, I don't think Microsoft's going to make their own VR stuff. I think they're going to partner with Facebook and do Oculus Rift VR. Because Facebook owns Oculus Rift now. So. Yeah. And that's the thing I feel like I could see. Xbox doing like, oh, let's partner with Facebook and do VR with the Oculus Rift and have all the blame be shit whenever it fails on, on Facebook and not us. Because that's because that's what we need. We need Facebook sponsored VR on Xbox, and so you can get all the all your your racist, hateful, false political information in ad form right on your VR headset. Way to go! Yeah, I mean it. it, it there's a lot of things wrong with Facebook buying out Oculus and what they've done in the in the coming weeks since, since owning Oculus. But that's a that's another episode for a podcast for another time. Um. So, and and then this has just been Sony's thing. Sony introduces a piece of technology, tries very hard to push it. Um, if it doesn't take. They want, which if it doesn't take, then Sony wasted a whole bunch of money, and you know they've, like, they did it with the PSP. You don't see UMD discs anymore. Um, you're trying so hard to make VR happen, and I'm just like, uh, and you know the Switch isn't doing anything with it. Microsoft isn't doing anything with it, and so it's like I feel like Sony is out on a bit of an island with that. Well, to be fair, as far as just the Compared to the other offerings Sony did with like multimedia cards and UMDs and yep. Sony's proprietary memory sticks and flash drives and things like that, with VR there is at least some gain supporting for it. There are multiple forms of VR, mm-hmm. and there are VR games that actually have been very well reviewed for like game for as a gaming experience, an immersive experience. Um, Phasmophobia and I believe Amnesia. There was a site. There was a, an amnesia game that got released like a week ago. Not even. They both have VR components, and they're both very well received for their immersiveness. It's just the general idea of um, being the right mood and setting for the fear that those settings are trying to induce in you. So those, I can see VR being one of those things that like Sony may have adopted that actually might stick, but. I don't know. Because VR is still so relatively new. Yeah. So, you know, we're just about wrapped up, I think, with, with the Xbox chat. Uh, unless you had anything more to uh, to add. I, I Honestly, I guess it's worth mentioning the pricing. 300 bucks for the Series S and 500 for the Series X. Those are, I believe, under what a lot of us had predicted for the series for both for both versions. From our prior prognosticating of these consoles, yeah, and I, 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 I didn't listen to the to the prognosticating episode in advance. I think you and Ronnie uh, had had both of them pegged at around had both PS5 and the Series X pegged at five hundred. But I'll have to uh, to to go back on that. I, I believe was, I believe was hoping for five fifty for the Series X and five hundred for the PS5, but. That is t- that is still beyond my price range. So, and it comes out November tenth. Comes out November tenth. So, all right. So I think with that we will cut to break, and when we come back, we will go d- diving headlong into the PlayStation Five, aka that Belkin router you had in two thousand and three. So. With that, we will uh, have some music, and we'll see you on the other side. You're listening to our our final PS5 and Xbox Series X chats here on Downloadable Content with Ron and I. We'll be back.
welcome back to downloadable content. Ron and I are still here. Um, we can't afford the new consoles, or at least I can't. So I mean, it's not like we rushed out to buy them. I don't think waiting in lines would be a good idea right now, anyway. So. Uh, yes, all that social distancing stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Oh God, I'm just what I'm just now. I'm thinking like all the people who ordered pre-ordered these consoles, and they're all going to be mailed out. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. How many are gonna get how many of them are gonna get stolen slash broken? Yeah. Uh, whatever. Um all right. not our problem. We're not, not buying them day one. Not yeah. <laughs> Never buy a piece of brand new tech on day one. Um let everyone out let all y'all break it first before I go out and get it. Um all right, so we spent the first half talking about the sex box. We are, we are going to shift into Sony's PlayStation 5. Now, of of the two new consoles, the PlayStation 1 was the one I was b paying attention to a bit more. I've only ever owned one Xbox console. I was I, ha I had a 360 for a little while. I feel I feel like everyone that's probably owned a 360 but in, in defense of Sony at the time when people were owning 360s, the PS3 was about $700. So yeah, Microsoft really, really took took you know had took advantage of that. So I was a 360 owner briefly, and then then that was that was that. But the PS3 still remains. But um, but yeah, so I was I was paying a bit more attention to Sony, and part of me was wondering um how badly they were going to shoot themselves in the foot and part of me was genuinely hopeful that maybe maybe there would be a ps5 in my future um but given some of the the spe some of the news about it um it looks like that i will be taking at, at least initially another hard pass very much the way i did for for ps4 i mean i still don't own a ps4 so but you know, enough of me being being negative about it. Let's actually dive into the PS5. Let's uh, let's let's talk some some specs here. Yep. All right. So for the hardware specs here, we have eight core Zen 2 AMD processor at 3.5 gigahertz. Uh, but it says here in parentheses variable frequency, which means it could probably go a little bit higher, or it could be base minimum of 3.5 gigahertz at a minimum, which is again comparable to a modern day PC it's, uh, CPU core 10.28 teraflops 36 computation cores at 2.233 gigahertz again the variable frequency um, so it could be boost a little bit higher it could boost a little bit lower 16 gigs of GDDR6 at 256 bits again relatively similar to what the Series X has um it's a little over for the memory bandwidth. Uh, the internal storage is a little bit smaller. It's a, an SSD at eight at a 825 gigahertz. Gigabyte. I'm guessing some of that's gigabit. Sorry, um, I'm guessing some of that's also going to be set aside for Sony's. It's probably it's probably a terabyte SSD with like 120 set aside for the like Sony's operating for system. For the OS, yeah, yeah. Um, input output is at 5.5 gigahertz at raw. Which means like it can handle that much raw data being sent through the uh, CPU computation core, basically. Um, it does have an expandable NVMe SSD slot, so you can add more memory to it. It also has support for USBs as, an, as a hard disk drive, so that you can in a, a detachable US uh, hard drive, hard drive yeah. and then it also has. Um, an optional uh, 4K UHD Blu-ray drive, and that's if you're buying the $500 optical drive version of the PS5. So overall, it's a little bit less, you know, raw power than the Xbox Series X, but still a very, very, it, it, it's still a significant workhorse. Yeah. Um, probably the biggest boon of the uh, PS5 is the fact that the it does have a dedicated expandable um, hard drive slot for NVMe, um, which also means that that, that Sony is not only expecting, but they are allowing people to dive into the hardware and like taking apart the PS5. Which surprised me, given how, given Sony's proprietary nature. 
I mean, yes, you had yeah. you you had some of that sort of limited capability with um, the previous generations. I mean, you you could. I mean, I was able. You could do that on PS3. You could take the hard drive out, put a new one in there. Um, yeah, uh, for the PS4, they do allow you to take out the hard drive and put it in a SSD instead. Right. Or, or you can put one in if you want to. Yep. Um, but it, it is worth mentioning that now, not only is that a thing that people are expecting, but they're allowing, it also means that they're expecting people to eventually do it and have it be a relatively painless process. Yes. Um, there is a teardown video of the PS5 online, and if you look it up, those white slots that are have that that weird bell curvy, like MC Flesher look to them, uh, those are actually can be relatively easily detached. So they they slide on and off like a like a PC case almost, like a, or a setting for a PC case. Mm. Um, so honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if there are third party like covers for those that could, that get made eventually. Or it's a, it's, it's a case of like, oh, just slide off the white and put on these like third party like slots instead. Yep. Well, to, well, to allow for different aesthetic or better cooling or what have you, I don't know. But it's, it's an optional thing. And um, I believe the one that was torn down was a disk drive version. Yes, that's right. You mean. So you could because we're, we're getting two flavors of PS5 as well, a, a, an optical and a digital like the sex box. Yeah. Um, now, it is worth mentioning that there is no difference between the, for the, for the most of the hardware between those two versions. The only difference is one comes with a disk drive and the other one does not. One is expected to have you download all your games digitally. The other one has the disk drive as an optional thing. And then the disk, and the disk drive version cost five hundred dollars. Vigil only version costs four hundred. Yeah. Mine. That mm, that that's gonna be an interesting uh, an interesting thing to see with between Microsoft and and Sony with their digital only offerings because you have a just a hundred dollar difference for Sony. Microsoft is going two hundred dollars so well, keep in mind too the two hundred dollar difference is also that the Series S is not going to be as a heavy hitter as the Xbox Series X. Right. So, like the, like the Series S is probably like it's, in terms of raw power, it's probably it, it's almost certainly going to be Series S, PS Five, Xbox Series X. But the differences between the Xbox Series X and the PS Five are so minimal that it's not going to be as a, as big of a noticeable. Ink as a bit of a noticeable thing between the PS5 and the Xbox Series S. Mm. So that that's still gonna be I'm I'm like I'm I'm curious as to the business decisions as to you know why Sony dis I mean well like why Microsoft decided for its digital version to make it not as a heavy hitter or not even the, the like just do what Sony did and just basically make the same console minus the disc drive like I wonder what why the business decision because Sony is just coming right out in here saying yeah. These two consoles are exactly al alike, save for the disk drive. So I'm very curious as to as to why Microsoft decided to go with the digital version of theirs being a a weaker, quotes weaker console. If I had to guess, I would, I would surmise that they were actually aiming at Nintendo. Uh, okay. Okay. And being like, listen, here's a here's a dedicated console that's going to be miles stronger than the Nintendo and it costs the exact same as Nintendo's thing. The only difference being that you don't have the portability of the Switch. Uh, and then compared it to the PS5 where you go, okay, our console is just as strong, if not stronger than the PS5. We both have the optical drive. So at that point, and then at the $500 price point, you're arguing over which which of these two consoles has the better gaming lineup? And I feel like the, that this is where Sony is going to really pull ahead once again. All right. 
But uh, but before we we dive into uh, the games, like we did on the first half, we'll talk backwards compatibility, and this is where, once again, deep beleaguered sigh. Sony does not like backwards compatibility. They they made their position abundantly clear when they had, when the PS4 was announced, and they said that your PS1, 2, and 3 games are not going to be backwards compatible. And oh, by the way, none of your PlayStation Network purchases on PS3 will carry over to PS4. That was, for me, the kind of like the dagger. That was the final nail in the coffin for me on not buying a PS4 because I'm just like, well, screw you. If you're not going to... like, It's one thing to not have backwards compatibility with, like, the really old games, like PS1 and PS2. But to even go on record and say, we're not even going to support digital downloads from the PlayStation Store on the PS4, you have to rebuy them all over again, I call bullshit. And I'm like, guys, emulation's a thing. Um... Like, I just, I, I call bullshit. And they're they're sort of playing the same card with the PS5. They're going to make, obvi- they're, it's going to be backwards compatible with the PS4. Okay. But once again, they are basically saying, yeah, PS1, 2, and th- your your big PS1, 2, and 3 library. Yeah, fuck you. Uh- So once again, yeah. I and, I, and I can and like I, it's it's an it's really bad too when they has been spending a lot of time on having the PS3 two and one libraries get updated and put on the PlayStation Store to allow for them being played on a PS4. Now they got to do that exact same process all over again for the PS5 when they're not even doing it out of the gate. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, it, it just seems really dumb. Like. Uh- Come on, guys. How is the emulation technology that different between the PS4 and the PS5? If anything, it should be easier. Because it's a PS5 running on goddamn PC specs. There are emulators right now for PS3, PS2, and PS1 games that have them run very easily and very cleanly on any of uh, any uh, like, like 90, 90 uh, anywhere from 90 to 95% of the games. If you get an emulator for those consoles and you and you get the right, like, computational operating system like they're gonna run a-ok yeah it ain't, a- emulation's not that hard when the fans have already solved the fucking problem for you yeah basically so once again I have no I, I have no reason to get rid of my PS3 because fuck you Sony you already got my money when I bought uh, when I purchased PS1 and 2 games from the PlayStation Store onto my PlayStation 3, fuck you if you're going to make me buy them again and then again. Yeah. Like, no. No. Just... So, when I was I was hoping that, you know, maybe Sony would, would revise their stance and make it so that, you know, maybe I can, you know, one day get rid of my PS3. Nope! Yeah, it's it's pretty bad. Meanwhile, and this is where I think Microsoft, you know, is going to take some some advantage because Microsoft already came out and said, you know, you'll be able to play some of some of you know the libraries from four generations of of Xboxes, whereas Sony is just seemingly content to basically just sweep everything, you know, PS one, two, and three under the rug. Which and is to kind of credit, sad. And to Microsoft's credit, for the games that don't have support, it's just because they haven't started working on the emulation for those games yet. Like, eventually, they'll probably get there. It just won't be available day one. And and honestly, by and large, a lot of those games are not going to be the are going to be like the French titles from the Xbox and the 360. They're not going to be your Halos or your Gears of Wars from the original Xbox and the Xbox 360s. Those are those are going to be those ones will be day one uh, backwards compatible most most likely. So you know, 
That's exactly it. And you know, and I know that you know there's 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 a school of thought out there. So it's like, who plays old games? Uh enough people do. Otherwise, the used game market wouldn't still be as as vibrant as it is. <laughs> like, it's like, still I, vibrant, but even if GameStop is isn't the one hemming and hawing at the at the at the reins of it, like. Like we we all know that the AAA the made the big video game industry the AAA industry is trying so hard to wipe out the used video game market forever, like of all of all of the different meat types of media that we consume, it is only the video game industry that hates its used market so much that they want to to just obliterate it. So, you know. It's just very sad that you know Sony is one, is taking an opportunity here to to not even acknowledge those fans that still play these older gems. So that, yeah, that was that was kind of of uh, you know disappointing to see. Not surprising, but disappointed. Yep, I agree. So that's 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 Sony's backwards compelli. But you know, PS4 games, you'll, you'll be fine. But anything older than that, uh, hopefully you still have your PS3s. So that's 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 Sony's take on backwards compatibility. Um. So with with that, I guess we can now chat about their uh, their launch lineup. Um, yeah, yeah, we can. Uh, Unless you had anything else to add on their specs. No, 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 I don't. I, I was just pulling up their list again. Um, now, granted, some of these are going to be on PS4. Uh, like the, like Spider-Man Miles Ross is going to be on PS4. But uh, that's expected to be a launch title for the PS5, which is the, uh, like, DLC upgrade side content to Spider-Man. Uh, other things here. Uh, slated for release is a remake of Demon Souls. Uh, we have Sackboy, a Big Adventure, Godfall, which is a multi-platform one, so whatever. Bug Snacks, which is a weird, creepy looking like Muppety sort of thing. Uh, Astro's Playroom, Destruction All Stars, which is like Destruction Derby meets Arena Combat. Um, the Pathless. You have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, NBA 2K221, uh, Borderlands 3, Fortnite, Destiny 2, Observer, System Redux, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Like that, those are the ones that are like the immediate list here. So if you see any others that I missed, feel free to rile them off for being like day one or week one titles. Um. Yeah. I mean, I I can see the Spider Man game Miles Morales. Um. Yeah. Being a hit. Yeah, and considering that um, Spider Man was still received uh, initially, I can see the Miles Morales one being a another well-received sequel update to it. Um, Destruction All-Stars is, is, uh, it's not quite twisted metal, but it's giving me those sort of vibes. It's kind of like Destruction Derby meets Rocket League almost. Kind of, of kind of. Like it doesn't have the like the grungy gritty feel that Twisted Metal did. Yeah, this is this is yeah, it's taking like the aesthetic of like Rocket League and applying Destruction Derby aspects to it instead of instead of soccer. Uh, Demon Souls. I'm like, okay, what year is this? Uh, like, are we in 2009 again? Yeah, I mean, it's, it is a day one release and it is a fully updated remake for the game which is like a thing that even some of the fans were like hoping for but not expecting um there are things go on like 
go ahead. What were we gonna say? Um, there's a new IP that I'm curious about. It's called Godfall. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm like, I don't know if it's gonna be good or not, just because we've seen similar sorts of things come out in the past and have them flop. Um, it's be- it is being published by Gearbox. Um, yep. Being developed by Counterplay Games, which I think is this Counter- is their Counterplay. Yeah. Um, I think it's their first game, but let me just take a quick uh, yeah quick check. I thought I thought it was their first game as well. Um, and then obviously a day later we got Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, another console selling game for Call of Duty. Let's see. What games have uh, uh I'll uh I'll have to th- I'll have to th- take a look. I think this is the f- their first game. So the fact yeah. that I think uh the fact that an indie an indie studio is getting a launch game that's huge. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and then Sony's also going on record saying like they have uh, Horizon Forbidden West. Something West? Forbidden. Something like for, for Forbidden West? Forbidden West. Yeah. That's 2021. God of War Ragnarok is quote unquote soon or probably 2021 or 2022. Uh, Final Fantasy 16 is going to get a PS5 exclusive release for God knows whenever that game gets released. Um, Ratchet and Clank has slated for a first quarter 2021 release. Um, Ghostwire Tokyo is slated for 2021 as well, but that may change. And, and, and that's- yeah, we're looking at these at these launch titles, and you know. This it the, both the Xbox and the PS5 suffer the same issue. It's like all the games that you really might be hyped for are not coming out until well into next year. Yeah, and it like both launch title, both launch lists. As, as you said it in the first half. I mean, it does. There's nothing really that that sort of excites me, like. I kn- like a lot of these games are probably going to come to PC as well. We got yeah. th- l- let's let's face it. I mean, there's going to be some that are going to be timed exclusives. But I'm just looking at these these titles and like there while there are a few that I could see starting strong, there's not nothing on either Microsoft's list or Sony's list that scream to me Buy it now. Buy it when you buy the console. Yeah, and, and, and like to be fair, at least with Sony, there's some first party ones here. You get Destruction All Stars, yep. Astro's Playroom, Bug Snacks, um, Sackboy, and then a few months later, you got Ratchet and Clank. Like those are all like first party or second party titles that are coming out within. Is that day of within like six months of the console being launched? Right, so that window. Yeah, we're like we're like yes, they're 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 going to be games that people are will probably enjoy in some fashion that are directly tied to Sony itself. Um, compared to Microsoft, where they have like none. It was, it was like I don't think we listed off all the Xbox game studio games last last time, and like none of them really jumped out at me whereas I like Astro's Playroom Demon Souls um, is being published by Sony Interactive Entertainment uh, Sackboy is being published by them too like if nothing else like we've seen Sackboy it's not a bad game it's 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 simple but it's just, it's not meant for I shouldn't say it's not meant for adults, but it's definitely a game more aimed at kids, I would say. Mm. Same with Astro's Playroom. Yeah. Like, I know I know, it's a big risk, you know, bringing 
you know, mentioning the word Nintendo in a podcast about Sony and Microsoft, but it's like none of them give none of these 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 launch lists give me that same sort of must have feel than say Nintendo did with Breath of the Wild as a day one title. Yeah, like I, I, if if you had told me that as an example, Halo Infinite and Horizon. Forbidden West for day one titles for like the, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, like those would be like the titles that people would probably want to go out and be like, yes, I want to get these games, these consoles day one for these games. Like I'm trying to think of what other Sony title it would be, like day one must have. Like, you know, if we were blessed with. Like Final Fantasy 16 as a launch title. Yeah, I mean, like that's not going to happen. But um, uh, I mean, I mean, I say this. I say Resident this. Evil Eight, Devil May Cry Six. Uh, theoretically, it's uh, Infamous Four, I guess. Uh, Uncharted. Um, and like, like, like those would be things that I would think of for like Sony titles that would that would be like day one purchases. I think. I mean, then again, you know, we're we're getting, I think we're getting a, I think we're getting a little ahead of ourselves because I mean, looking at, yeah, maybe maybe we're a little spoiled here in that in this regard. But it's like I'm taking a look at what the launch titles were on our consoles of old here, like. For example, like the PS2 launch, like, like the day one launch list, you know, there were a lot of forgettable games on here. Like, there, there wasn't like Dynasty Warriors 2 and Armored Core 2 and... Ridge Racer 5, you know, you know, I'm getting, we are getting ahead of ourselves. Maybe, you know, we're, we're putting a bit too much stock in the, in the, in the launch list, you know, knowing like maybe we've gotten a little bit spoiled by the fact that Nintendo occasionally just blows it out of the water on their launches. Like GameCube, we got Luigi's Mansion, um, Luigi's Mansion, Super Monkey Ball. We got, um, again, yeah, Breath of the Wild for the Switch. We got Mario sixty four for the uh, for the N sixty four. So you know, maybe maybe tone down the expectations. I mean, obviously, you want people to buy your new consoles so that you can seed the audience. That way, when the big releases do come out within the first year, you have that built in audience. Yeah. But I think it's also too that it's a thing worth saying is that um, the, the the generational updates from one to the next, where like some of that desire has been shifted to the third parties, where you have your Assassin's Creed and your Call of Duties, like those are the things that are probably going to be your console sellers for day one nowadays. But as a, as a consequence, like they're 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 cross generational, so they're, they're going to be seen on the PS4 and the Xbox Ones and your PCs and stuff like that. Right, which is sort which has become the accepted practice now. Like th that just tells me that the PS4, like the example, the PS4 and the PS5 are similar enough where you can do that. Where that wasn't really the case, you know, several generations ago. Like you couldn't release a PS3 game on the PS2 at the same time. Like, the jump in technology was that great. Yeah. Or PS1 and PS2, even. Uh, yeah. Like, the, the difference in technology was, was that great. Whereas now, and, you know, again, we, we've said this for a long time, it's like, we're, we're... These new consoles, these two consoles, they're PCs. They are absolutely PCs. And the PS4 and the Xbox One are also PCs. So it's like, 
the fact that we've reached the point now where you can do a launch title on a new console while simultaneously releasing that same exact game on your previous console kind of tells me that you don't really need to rush out and buy the new thing yet. Yeah, I don't. Um, I, the only benefit really to brushing out buying it new is maybe you get some like initial buyer's reward, something like the Xbox is doing with their pricing on their Game Pass stuff. That's not even a thing Sony is doing. They're still just offering its final PlayStation Gold or PlayStation Plus for their normal pricing. So there's no really not as big of a benefit it, for the PS5 it's so compared to... And, it's so you can rush out and buy the PS5. Is that way you can say first? Yeah. <laughs> Although much. I am, I am, I am, I'm actually interesting. Like, I'm looking at, at the original, the PS4 launch lineup back in 2013 and how kind of similar it is to the PS5 launch because... What, what do we got on the PS5? Okay, we have... Hold on. Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty... Uh, for, like, for like third-party titles, you mean, or for... And like I'm just looking at the launch window, period. Like, the PS4, when it launched, your day one games were Assassin's Creed 4, Black Flag, Call of Duty Ghosts, Battlefield 4, FIFA 14... NBA 2K14. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's and then comparing it to the to the PS5, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, Madden NFL 21, NBA 2K21. Uh huh. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. So it's so just your, be... your 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 yearly installments of franchises that people are still way too gullible and still paying full price for. <laughs> mm -hmm. The more things change, Ryan. The more things change. <laughs> I just noticed that. I'm looking I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> What's the meme? What's the meme, Brian? Two, 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 two astronauts staring up at the Earth. <laughs> One of them's holding a gun to the back of his head. You're like, wait, it's just all refreshes. Always has been, Brian. Always has been. Always has been. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just noticed that. It's like, yeah, what year is this? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Time really has no meaning. Just, you can, you can, uh, apparently you can just, you can always count on Ubisoft, EA, and 2K getting their launch titles in because and, and Activision and slash Activision. Treyarch yes okay you know the, the sequels that they spend you know just a couple months just shitting out just upscaling things yeah. and uh, you know making sure you know it, it maps properly to the new operating system but I'm just like wow does it crash when you put it on the PS5 nope okay fine ship 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 yep <laughs> get it out of here we're good <laughs> I, um, I I would have loved to have seen the next Gran Turismo game be a launch title. I mean, that would have been nice to see. Wait, didn't they show off Gran Turismo 6 or something for I have when no they idea. did their PS5 reveal? It would be 7 now. We're, we're okay. On. We're at 7 now. I, I can't remember. So it was, it, was, it was announced at their reveal event. Yeah, and it's, it's slated for like a 2021 release, I think. Um, we don't actually have a release date. Do we yet. not have a release date? We don't, for it. we don't. Okay. It's just they showed it off. Okay. Like it's a thing that's in development, but no release date yet. Yeah, I can see that being a 2021 title, probably like a May or a June title. Like release it during the dog days of summer. Like people are gonna want to stay inside and stay cool when. It's five billion degrees outside because the sun's going to go supernova. Yep, like I and, and you know just Gran Turismo is probably one of the few, one of the only franchises that is still specifically Sony exclusive. Like you will never find it on any other platform. 
except a PlayStation. Yeah, Gran Turismo. Um, I have never seen a Gran Turismo main entry on anything but a PlayStation console. I believe I'm going to look this up. So you can feel free to talk about some other stuff in the meantime. I thought there was a Gran Turismo that was eventually put on PC, but it was like a like an old, old Gran Turismo. Like there have been a, a few offshoot games that have hit. Uh, there's one that hit that was on PSP. They re-released the original Gran Turismo on PSP. Um, okay, but. It is, um, yeah, I do not see, I think Gran Turismo is, is like, one, one of the only, like, actual, genuine, bona fide console exclusives still left that isn't, uh, Nintendo's bevy of IPs. Yeah. So... Yeah, it looks like yeah, it looks like Grand Theft has only been on PS PS consoles. Interesting. That's it. Or PlayStation consoles. Yeah, I could have sworn there was one that was released for PC, but I was mistaken. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, we've we've got the launch lists for both games, um, and PS Five comes out two days after the the Xbox, Xbox One. Yeah. So. So that second week of November um I'm I, yeah, second week like the like I think like from like November 10th to November 20th is just like release 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 yeah I, I, I foresee a lot of people needing retail therapy after the election but um yeah that that second and third week of November is just gonna be like who is gonna? Who is going to print the most money? Which I think leads us into our our wind down here. Um, yeah. So you know, which do you th- which do you think will have a, a better start out of the gate? Which one do you think? My initial read is people are going to buy for for the Microsoft fans. They're going to buy the Series X. For the Sony fans, they're probably just going to buy the digital only version. I don't see them buying this version just because I don't feel like people are going to uh, people that are buying the, the people that are Sony fans will probably also have good enough area that's where they can get by without having a disc drive. I'm curious. What makes you think that more Xbox fans will spring for its full system than Sony? Uh, generally speaking the diehard Microsoft fan base will spring for the better system to get whatever few FPS they can get out of Halo. All right. Like the, the Halo is the only reason really to buy an Xbox, in my opinion. And they'll, they'll take any advantage they can get out of buying the console for buying the higher rate, buying the higher price console to get whatever few frames they can get out of the Series X on some perceived benefit of more frames equals better gaming. Whereas, you know, Sony is releasing two identical consoles, just one. Yeah. Out of the strength. Okay. Yep. Like, like, the, the, like the, if, 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 if we're being honest, the disk drive version, the PS5 for your old companies like you and I, that would buy physical products that they, if we could still find them. And also for people who are in, the more rural areas of the world that don't have access to stable internet. Or I should say like, or they may be on satellite internet, for example. Mm. Like those are the people that are going to buy the disc versions and like the that hundred dollar price markup is not going to be a big, is not going to be as noticeable for them because it's going to cost the same thing if they tried to buy a series X because the Series X for them would be 500 bucks for a disk drive because there's no disk drive on the Series S. Right. All right. So, so, I mean, you've, you've, um, 
I mean, obviously, you, both fans will, will do what they want. But which which do you think has like like a the stronger jump out of the gate? Like, I know you know which which do you think will resonate more at, right at the start? Probably the PS Five, simply because Spider Man is like going to be the, the Spider Man and by proxy Miles Morales is going to be the big seller for it because. Assuming you don't have a PS4 already, like, and you want to, and you, and, assuming you don't have a PS4 already, and you heard all the rave reviews for Spider Man when it came out, and then you can go to, and you're thinking about buying a PS4, and you're like, maybe I want to buy a PS4, do I want to buy a PS4 just for Spider Man? But then, you, then, then the PS5 gets announced, and you go, oh, I could buy PS5 with the Spider Man game and get that DLC for the game, and now have a brand new console. That will have however many games that get released on the PS5, and at the very least, you can go okay. That also includes at the very least Horizon Zero Dawn and then Horizon Forbidden West. Hmm. And like the the and compared to the Xbox, where you can go okay, well I can get Halo on the Xbox, or and I can get Gears of War Six, which is just another sci-fi shooter. So I get two sci-fi shooters compared to a superhero action adventure game, and then a exploration post-apocalyptic action adventure um, PS5 for like Horizon Zero Dawn and Spider-Man. All right, not n- not not a bad uh, prognostication. You know, solid, solid, solid reasons for for yeah. deciding the way you did. I'm gonna and, think- and the price is the same for like the like honestly like, again. Assuming you're buying the Xbox Series X and the PS5 with the Apple Drive, the exact same price, five hundred bucks. And then you just go to the games and you're just like, okay, well, to me, in my opinion, the games library for PS5, both on release and for future announcing, is going to be stronger than what the Xbox has right now. Granted, that may change because Xbox may end up having console exclusives of Elder Scrolls Six and Starlight and uh, Fallout, but we won't know until the Fallout of, the the Fallout of Microsoft buying Bethesda is completed and what they are going to do with it. Well, yeah, this you know you, the next game is just going to be the Elder Scrolls Six New Vegas, so. Yeah, we're, 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 we're approaching that. So, um, all right. So my my pick, um, I'm I'm gonna go with the opposite. I think Microsoft is gonna have the stronger start, um, for a couple of reasons. One, I think the Series S, the three hundred dollar console, I think is going to do gangbusters because it's the same price as the Switch. Yeah, it's the same price as the Switch. You have an amazing uh, offer with the Game Pass, mm-hmm. and also better backwards compatibility. Yeah, and that's totally reasonable too. Like that, that may be what bolsters their launch initially, but as, as time goes on, I think the library that Sony has will shine through. Oh yeah, again as as it did with the PS4. I I I I. I do not doubt I do not doubt that at all just I think that just on a on a pure just just raw just start within the within the our our holiday window here and within yeah, within the first two months basically yeah w- within the first like three to six months I think Microsoft gets the early jump um how they will sustain that we'll see or if if Sony um you know, arrives to the party a bit late, but I think just just in terms of just a raw, right out of the gate start, I think Microsoft sprints out ahead, and then we'll get to see. I think we'll we'll have a better idea um, where they are in their first year once E three rolls around. Yeah, and finding out no. all, all the titles that will be released in six years. Yeah, I, it's it's a thing to keep in mind too that there are some titles that were announced. Uh, what was it? Elden Ring um, is a title that's being done by From Software, which is the George R. No, it's not. It's the George R. R. Martin plus 
Japanese game developer mashup of yes, yes, yes. Demon Soul was a Song of Ice and Fire slash Game of Thrones, so who knows how that that's going to be like? Um, that's probably not going to be shown until either Video Game Awards of this year or E3 of next year. Um, what's another thing that's like going to jump out at me? Resident Evil Eight, Monster Hunter World Two, because that's a that's like the worst. That's like the worst kept secret. In, in 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 Capcom, in my opinion, right now is it's not a question of if, but when. Mm. Um, we already know that there's a Monster Hunter Rise coming out out for the Switch, uh, which is slated for release. I want to say early 2021. Let me see if they had announced that. Yeah, March 26th of 2021 for Monster Hunter Rise, which is a Switch game. Um, but I mean, Microsoft World is 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 Capcom's largest selling is like the the largest selling game they have. So it's not even a question of if, but when is it going to get? Is when the sequel going to get released? Yeah. So you know, we'll see. We shall see what happens. But in the meantime, I will sit here smugly superior on my PC and yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh look, all these games coming out, and oh, I have a PC that can run all of them at fourteen forty at or fourteen forty p at however many frames I want because I, sp I spent eight hundred dollars on this kind of this thing. Um. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's what I'm gonna do. So, but yeah, uh, you know. Have fun if you if you if you buy these consoles, you know either console. Enjoy it. I I hope you have a blast. I am going to take a wait and see approach. Yeah, I, I think it's worth knowing that like I, from a pure hardware standpoint, these things are worth their are 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 definitely worth their value. Is it's going to be a question of what the game launch is going to look like later on down the road, which is only a thing that we can only further prognosticate on. Yes. So, all right. You have any any last thoughts? Uh, I guess I guess briefly worth mentioning. Um, the Series S controllers looks like a normal Xbox controller, and PS5 controller looks like a boomerang. So make sure you don't whack yourself with the PS5 one. Yes, you'd be yeah. thrown in rage. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Not at all. Yeah, don't 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 throw your boomerang controller at the TV. Otherwise, it might come back and whack you in the face. All right. Uh, one last thing too. Um, there are reports that there might be Bloodborne at 60 FPS on the PS5 in the near future, which is a thing that might be worth considering. Um, we also do know that Monster Hunter World uh, has been spotted running on both the Series X and the PS5 at 60 frames per second, so with load times of under two seconds. So that's at least a thing worth considering when it comes to backwards compatibility. All right. So if any of you out there have questions, thoughts, comments on this episode or any other episode of downloadable content, you can let us know um, on our Facebook and our Twitter and on our website, dlcpodcast.com. Click the feedback button. Let us have it. Um, you can also check out, remember, every single episode is on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Google Play Music, and Spotify, as well as our website, dlcpodcast.com. So it's all there for you to listen to so we're, we're coming down to the wire here three more episodes remain now after this one uh we'll be talking uh we'll be talking the uh the end of the 3ds and doing a, a chat on that uh we'll be talking about sonic as it gets ready to turn 30 and then we're gonna wrap it up this with a uh, our uh, a free play because why the hell not so that's, that's what we got looking forward to. All right. All that remains for me to do is to thank Ron for being on this episode with me. So on that, have a good one. 